All right, Quentin, thanks for joining us. We'll start with John Warner, Waco Tribune Herald. Yeah, hi, Quentin. Um, you guys have had some really impressive rebounding numbers this year. And not a, a particularly tall team. Why, why are you guys able to rebound like you do? Uh, Coach just puts emphasis on it every time. He says, whoever's on the court, you have to rebound. You have to crash the glass, whether it's offensively or defensively. And I think just doing a bunch of drills like that in practice, uh, just tough, just being a tough team, that's just who we are. And I feel like just Coach emphasizing as much as he does, we had just no another choice but to rebound. Okay, Mark Berman. Hey, uh, Quentin, generally speaking, what is, what is Kel's message to some keys against to beat Baylor? Uh, we know they're a really good team. Uh, they have really good guards. They have really good front line with the bigs. Uh, they play really well together. Just, uh, they they can move the ball really well offensively. We have to know they have good shooters. We just kind of just have to stay disciplined to know where everybody is on the court. Uh, they like to kind of get they switch everything defensively, offensively to like try to find the uh, the match that they like and go at them. So we just have to play as a team uh, and just play Cougar basketball really, and everything will take care of itself. Kevin Brockway. Yeah, Quinn, I'm just curious about uh, Coach Sampson in terms of uh, his kind of his leadership and his guidance. He's been to a Final Four before. Has he imparted any kind of advice with regards to that and what, what, what he's been like throughout this whole tournament? Yeah, he really just has to enjoy the moment because you never know if you're going to be able to be back in this moment again. Uh, Coach Q's been to the Final Four. Uh, HP's been to the Final Four. So just those guys just tend to really enjoy it and they go farther than uh, what they did. Okay, Randy from KPRC TV. Hey, Quinn, Randy McAvoy, KPRC uh, 2 in Houston. Uh, when you transferred in, can you just talk about the transition of knowing, I mean, after that one year at Kansas, what was it about U of H and Coach Sampson where you knew that was going to be a fit for you? What, can you walk me through that a little bit? Uh, I had watched them. I had known they had a really good year my freshman year, uh, watching them on TV. Um, I had seen them a couple games in the tournament. And then once I decided to transfer, we kind of – I knew most of the guys already on the team. Uh, and then just kind of just talking to Coach Sampson, just, just seeing how much freedom he uh, allows his guards to play out there with on the court, it kind of stood out to me. Uh, and I kind of – and just, just watching film, really just seeing how much like, he let his guards really play and make decisions, made, even if they have uh, – a bad turnover, he lets his guards play through it, and that's what I really liked about it. And, I, and we just kind of had a connection, really. Kendall Cout. Hey, Quentin, Kendall Cout, ODB. You were at Kansas, and you would have played against Mark Vidal and Jared Butler a couple of years ago. What have you seen watching film in this season from there to a few years ago to now? Yeah, they're definitely getting better. Mark is always, uh, Mark Vidal's always been a tough, hard-nosed uh, kind of hustle, work dude, glue guy for them, for sure. Uh, Jerry's been a good, good, really good player for them. Can get it out the bounds, can score uh, mid range in the paint. He's been a really good player for them these past couple of years that I've seen. And we've got to make sure we kind of just know where both of those guys are at on the court when we play them. Dave Griffiths. Yes, uh, Quentin, being that you're from the state of Texas, is there a sense of pride that you got two Texas teams meeting, you know, head to head tomorrow? And does that say just kind of, what the state of the game is in your state? Um, I think it does hold some weight a little bit, just knowing that you got two Texas teams in the Final Four with a chance to go to the championship game. Uh, even though it's not really kind of a rivalry in a sense, I feel like there'll be some pride on the line. You know, now there are, on our team, there's a lot of kids from Texas and a couple of kids from Houston. I feel like it'll be a, definitely some pride on the line for sure. Greg Bailey. Hey, Quentin, Greg Bailey, ABC 13 in Houston. Dejan mentioned to us after the win over Oregon State that when they came back and tied it, you guys knew that you would make plays to win the game and you knew that you could outwork them. Where, where does that belief come from and how powerful is that for your team if it's Rutgers, Oregon State, where you guys just know that you're going to make the plays to win it late? I just feel like it starts, starts in practice. Coach, coach pushes in those situations in practice, whether it be the, the red team versus the white team. He puts us in those situations where whoever loses, the team's going to run. And I feel like those kind of situations prepare you for game moments like that. When it gets tied, you need a player or a, a team to go down there and make a big play offensively or defensively. And I feel like those, those kind of situations starts in practice, and that's what, is what kind of carries over to the game. Patrick Waring. 
Hey, Quentin, uh, Patrick Aaron from the MBS Sports Hour. Uh, I'm pretty sure playing at this level, I mean, uh, all of you guys are competitors, and your goal is to make it as, you know, as far as you can. But um, was there a particular moment this year where you guys really felt like, hey, this team is good enough to make it to the Final Four or beyond? Um, I feel like we knew that um, before the season started. I know once, once we all came together and we really were focused on uh, trying to not just individually by the team doing something special this year. I feel like that's when we kind of clicked. I feel like in the preseason, just seeing how well everybody was bonding in the pre and the summer workouts, then in uh, conditioning. And then just once uh, practice started, everybody kind of really enjoyed going to practice. And that, that's when I knew that we had a, a special team and a chance to do something special this year. Rod Walker times pick you. Rod, you there? Yeah, it, it was the mute thing didn't come on. Um, I want to ask you about Dejan and Bryson and just sort of what those two guys have brought to the locker room and maybe you have any funny stories about those two guys. Yeah, I mean, those are the those are the guys that are probably two funniest guys on the team for sure. Anywhere you go with them, you're going to be smiling, you'll be joking around, you'll probably be crying, laughing. So just anywhere in the locker room, in your hotel room, on the court, just wherever you are, you're probably going to be cracking up laughing for sure. The two funniest dudes on the team, no question. Matt Musel. Hey, Quentin. Matt Musel, KHOU 11 in Houston. Uh, I've got a question. Uh, your parents will be here. Uh, your mom and dad will be here. Your step, your stepdad. Uh, these folks have supported you through everything. Just I, even though you can't physically touch them, you know, be, hug them or anything the last few weeks, what's that been like? You know, as they're there for you all the time and the support they've, they've been there throughout this journey of yours yeah it's indescribable just how much they, they they mean to me for sure i don't know if i could ever give them as much love and as much uh as much support as i wish i could give them even though they can't be here and i can't go down and give them a hug but i call my mom every day my dad all of my talk to them 24 7 just because we're not able to see them and everything but just knowing how much they do for me is just something i i just love and love them so much i don't know if i'll ever be able to repay them hopefully i will one day though and last one, Joseph Girardi. Hey, uh, Quentin, just curious, now that you guys are here, what, what's the feeling like? And as each round goes by, I mean, are you the type of guy, I mean, is there, do you consider a pressure or are you guys a really relaxed bunch going into this? Um, I don't feel like there's a lot of pressure just knowing that all the work we put in. I feel like if you pre prepare the right way, then there shouldn't be any pressure on the game. Just go out there and just kind of execute the game plan. But I feel like every round we get, I feel like we kind of get even more confidence. I think the pressure kind of even takes off left because every round we get to, I feel like we feel like we're supposed to be there. So I don't feel like there's really any pressure, really.